What's up with you? For today's video, we're the full Q Charm Ability Pokemon Team. Dilly King, this one is for you. So what is Q Charm Ability? It has a 30% chance of infantriding the opposite gender if you get hit by a contacting move. Which isn't really all that good because there's not a lot of contacting special moves out there as well. Now, if you want your own custom theme team or Pokemon Sweep, you can check it out at patreon.com slash pinblind. Link in the description and tier 2 and above. Let's get into both of these battles. They're quite lengthy battles today, as you can probably imagine, trying to get this ability to activate. The first battle here, this is against Hatswood. And yes, we are back with Sword and Shield uh, battles, if you haven't noticed already. So the first Pokemon is going to be Vinilux. And I've got my Cinceno. Now, of course, every one of these Pokemon had Cute Charm as the ability, but I tried to run some sort of sets based around the ability, but it's very, very difficult. You have to pretty much wait until you get hit by a contacting move. So that could happen at any time. And it's not even guaranteed, right? Because it's only a 30% chance, which is actually quite low. So I've got a choice spec Cinceno here. We've got Echo Voice, Grass Knot, Dazzling Gleam, and Hyper Beam. Now, since I've seen the Vinilux on the field there, I was a little bit scared it might set up like uh, some sort of status move or veil or something like that or hit me really hard with a blizzard. So I decided to just fire a laser straight off the ripper and let's hook it out in one shot. Next Pokemon here, we got a theme team as well. We've got um, uh, <laughs> Fruit Roll-Up. I don't think I've had the, uh, a Fruit Roll-Up since I was like, man, it would have been like maybe five or six. They're like... Well, for, for in Australia, they're like a little rolly thing, and you just roll it up, and that's why they call it a fruit roller. So anyway, back to the battle here. We've got the Sanders Scorch actually swapping out here, and the next Pokemon is going to be Poltergeist. So I wonder if you can guess what this thing team is. Hmm, what could it be? So I'm going to take a little bit more damage there, and since I'm on recharge for the Hyper Beam and a Ghost Swapped in, I can't do anything. I've got the Choice Specs. I've got to swap out. That was Max Speed and Max Special Attack, by the way. Uh, tip in nature. Next is Milotic here. This is quite a good Pokemon for Q-Charm because at least it's bulky and can take a couple of hits. So Strength that is going to be used on Milotic there and the uh, Poltergeist is going to get a tiny little bit of health left. Now this set was really designed just to trap Pokemon in and get Q-Charm to activate. We've got Whirlpool, Attract, Akaring, and Toxic. Now I gave it Attract in case it just didn't fire off, which... Let's be real, a lot of the time this ability does not activate. And let's say the opponent doesn't have a contacting move, I still was actually able to do that. But I only gave one Pokemon a track because I wanted the ability to actually be activated in these battles. That was one of the hardest things about this, getting the ability to, you know, to activate. So uh, back to the battle here, we've got the Poltergeist going for Giga Drain here, doing a very sizable amount of damage to my uh, Milotic here. I've got a Poison on the Poltergeist, which is great. I've got Leftovers, Akaring Recovery, which is nice too, and Toxic and Whirlpool sort of racks up nicely. With the uh, Cute Charm, if you did get an activation, you could get the Infatuation there, and why the opponent uh, hopefully is unable to attack, you could get the Leftovers Recovery and the Akaring on the spot. So that's why I didn't include something like Recover. Normally on that set, I'd probably you know, choose to include Recover, but since I was doing a Cute Charm ability, I wanted to try and rely on its uh, ability a little bit more. But in this case, it wasn't uh, really happening. Now, on my team, I tried to uh, I mix up with the set. So I had a run really trolley set that I, was quite interesting, but I didn't actually get it to uh, you know actually happen. But uh, I will explain that later on as we go. So we've got a Poltergeist here. It's still trapped in by the Whirlpool, and my Whirlpool is going to miss this time. I could actually really do with a cup of tea at the moment. Like, I, I do like that nice, strong English breakfast. And uh, I do like to put a dash of milk in there, too. It's very, very nice. But some people are like, ew, milk in your tea? I, I just like it, you know, just a little bit. So it's not like completely black, you know. It's just like uh, tea and water. It's like tea and a little bit of milk. But I think it's different for, uh, you know, lots of other places. So uh, the old cup of tea here, I'm nearly going to pour it out. It's only got a little bit of health left. It's got Sucker Punch too, which is really cool. And that's going to put Milotic in the low amount of red health there. So if I had recovered, this, you know, wouldn't have been such a close matchup for Milotic. But uh, no uh, activations here, of course. Now on my team... I wanted to make sure that I could actually do some damage too. So I ran, actually I ran quite a few uh, uh, quite strong special attacking sets. And I had one fairly powerful physical attacker, but it did take a little bit of setup. Now the next Pokemon to come in is going to be Appleton. I did get the Toxic off, which is very important because I knew it would use some sort of grass move to take me out here, right? I've actually never had a um, an Apple and Rhubarb pot. What? I actually don't know if I've even had Rhubarb before. I don't know, like I have to... 
trying to cast some armor. Actually, no, I, I don't think I've, that's something that I've never, ever had before. Interesting. So uh, anyway, uh, what, what's a food you've never had before, but you know you probably thought about having but never had it? Leave it in the comment section below. Okay, now we're on the topic of food, right? So next Pokemon is Lopunny. We've got a, uh, this is a set I've run before. This is a special attacking speedy uh, Lopunny. We've got Hyper Voice. Focus Mist, Blizzard, and Thunder. I've got Throat Spray as the item here to boost up on Hyper Voice. And I thought the Blizzard would be the best go against this Appleton. Now, if it did have, let's say it had Thick Fat, it still would do some good damage to it, but I know that it wouldn't one-shot it. Now, so going for Blizzard here on the Appleton, and that's going to be enough to take it out in one shot, which is very, very nice. I'm not saying it would have done good damage regardless of ability, but, uh, you know, Lopunny's special attack isn't really that good. Now, the next Pokemon to come in here is going to be Slurpuff, right? We're going to go for another Hyper Voice here. It's pretty... Oh, I'm sorry, my first Hyper Voice, excuse me. And that's going to boost my special attack, which is good. Now, the Slurpuff is going to go for a Drain Punch. Like, oh, this might, this might actually activate my ability. That'd be really cool. Like, remember, it's only a 30% chance. And uh, the slurp puff is going to get some help back there. So, like, okay, you know, that's fine. And then activate. I'm like, finally, it took that long. So, we got the cute charm in uh, in play now. So, basically, when cute charm activates, it's exactly like using a track. So, you've got the same chance of infatuation. It's just, it's it's basically an inferior version of a track, but it's an ability. So, it's a, it's a, instead of being a, a move, it's an ability, which is kind of interesting, but. It's, it's very difficult to get it to activate and use well in a strategy because you don't really know what's going to happen. My best bet would probably, if you want to try and use this ability or make use of it, is to give it to a bulky Pokemon and to a Pokemon you know is going to get hit, like can take a hit and, uh, you know, it's possible a good chance of it getting hit by contacting moves. So going to Sinterno here, we got Endeavor on the Slurp Up, which was really interesting. I tried to actually get this Echoed Voice uh, Choice Spec strategy going because it actually hits like an absolute truck after about two or three. Unfortunately, Slurp Up is going to hit me with a Drain Punch there and take me out. I was hoping I could take it out on the second one, but I failed to. Slurp Up's got a, you know, it's got a decent amount of bulk to it. So that's going to be the end of since today. Things are not looking good at the moment. Things are looking, you know, they're looking pretty bad. So we're going to go with the Stuffle now. It's really interesting that Stuffle gets his ability too, which is, uh, you know, kind of nice. Now, we've got Bulk Up Rest, Force Palm, and Sleep Talk. Now, I had a really cool strategy here with this uh, bulky Stuffle. And I actually got it to work a couple of times, which is really more actually more than a couple of times. So this is really cool. With the slurp up going for draining kiss, draining kiss is one of the few special moves that's contacting. So it activates cute charm again. So like, oh, this is really cool. Uh, the fact that it was super effective was it wasn't that bad because I was running max health, max special defense with Everlight. So I was able to tank it pretty nicely. Now, I was hoping that Slurpuff could be infatuated here for a little while longer before it uses something like Endeavor, because Endeavor's got to do a lot at the start. And I just decided here, I'm just going to set up as many bulk ups as possible, because Slurpuff maybe, you know, it might just fall into my trap here, but I haven't completely, you know, done my strategy yet. So here comes another Drain Pudge here. Stuffle's probably only going to be able to take, like, one more attack, so I need to go for a rest very, very soon, you know? Um, I know that Slurp Up could possibly go for Endeavor then as well, but I really don't have uh, a lot to uh, lose here, right? So Stuff was going to be healing itself uh, all the way up here, hoping I can get some sort of luck with this infatuation on Slurp Up. Even like, you know, one or two turns will be amazing, and I finally got my first uh, Mobilize there, which is very, very good. So now we're going to go for Sleep Talk here, hoping that I get maybe an attacking move. That'll be good if I get my Force Palm. Now, the interesting thing about Force Palm, it actually has a chance to paralyze. So you might be able to see where I'm going with this strategy. So you've got the infatuation, and you've got the paralyze at the same time, and you can set up your bulk up. So it's gimmick, but it actually did work quite a few times. It's really, really cool, right? So unfortunately, I got Sleep Talk Rest here. It always happens, let's be real. And I was happy because I got to paralyze that turn. So my strategy is actually working pretty nicely. Um, we're going to go for another Force Palm here, trying to take out this Slurp Up before it uses Endeavor. I was really, really scared about that. And it didn't get the Endeavor off, and uh, the Stuffle is going to be able to take it out with another Force Palm. Actually, it's quite a funny animation to sort of like holds its hands up and kind of wiggles them around. So bye-bye, Slurp Up. Now, the next Pokemon to come in is going to be El Creamy. So another, you know, quite a good counter for my uh, uh, Stuffle here. Now, I know that Stuffle probably doesn't have much of a chance of taking, especially a G-Max El Premier, but maybe I can do a bit of damage or maybe stall this for a couple of turns uh, out of its G-Max, you know. I had to think what I could do here. 
Now, I've got two other more Pokemon on my team that should be able to take an Alcremie, or at least got a fighting chance of taking it out. So I had to do my drop here and try and stall with the stuff as much as possible. So it's going to hit me very, very hard there with a max star fall. I'm going to go for Force Palm, and of course, it does no damage like expected, you know, not very effective. And it's also got Rocky Helmet. You can tell, wait, it's like eating a cake, right? But someone put a stone on the cake, and then you ate it, and you know, it was really rocky. So. But anyway, Stuffle was going to faint here to the Al Creamy, and that is two turns stalled out. It's also going to go for a max Earth Growth, which is going to put the grassy terrain on the field, which is not a bad, uh, you know, not a bad move with Al Creamy because it's got a uh, G Max file, and of course, it's got the, uh, it's got like two rounds of health if you've got Earth Growth going too. So Clefable was my, uh, my offensive physical sweep with Belly Drum, but more on that set a little bit later. We're going to go into Wigglytuff. This was my troll strategy. Say if someone used um, Attract on you, right? And you were holding a Desinot, the Attract would actually bounce back. So I thought to give this a Desinot as the item. Now, the fact that someone using Attract on one of my Pokemon, there's not such a high chance of that happening, right? So that was the only like real troll set, or one of the many troll sets that I uh, you know, brought on this team. I thought it was really interesting. I also thought that it might be good to have Cute Charm with like a mix uh, you know, the female and the male too. So here comes a mystical fire from the Alcremi, and it's going to drop my special attack there. This set is just based around trapping someone in with Perisong. Well, I can't really trap them. It's more for their last Pokemon. I've got Perisong Protect, Wish, and Minimize, and we got the ability Cute Charm too. I've got the item Destinot, Max Health, and I've also got Max Special Defense, and I've got Impish Nature. So... This is just a tank here for the very, very last Pokemon. Say you get the Perisong up, and, you know, you've got one Pokemon left, and that Pokemon, well, it might not be able to take the last Pokemon out. You get the Perisong up, and you just spare Minimize, right? And uh, it's it's got a good chance of working, unless, you know, of course, the opponents who have Dynamax up there safe. So in comes old Fruit Roll up here. Now, this is where things got nasty, right? Because this actually has Fire Spin, and I thought they may try and go for an attacking move rather than going for fire spin but they've trapped me in unfortunately and my wigglytuff is not going to be able to do any damage at all i wasn't really sure if it had any other like attacking moves than fire spin uh, usually with fire spin you base it around like uh you know a status move than fire spin to rack up damage right now they're gonna have course i'm like okay they probably have some sort of physical attack too or they're just making themselves tanky then maybe that's the, the case as well so I just went for Minimize here. There's absolutely nothing my Wigglytuff can do at this stage in the game. This is definitely the most gimmick set on my team. And I, I didn't really expect it to, you know, to work. Um, I have had uh, other videos in the past where I've, uh, I think I've come across Destiny not being held by an opponent. And I used a track them and it got bounced back. It's really, really unique. Uh, that can be used outside of the uh, breeding. Anyway, so Wigglytuff is going to go down to Parasong. Not much I could have done there. Uh, I've got my Cafable. Plus, I didn't want to swap my Cafable into this either, so I thought the Wigglytuff was expendable. So we've got 50 seconds left on the clock here. I don't really want to go for a Belly Drum, knowing that the uh, Center Scorch has got a plus one in attack up there. So I'm going to go for the Dynamax on Cafable. Now, Cafable's moves are Belly Drum, Play Rough, Drain Punch, and Jewel Wing Beat. Dual Wing Beat is going to be the play to go for here because it is going to be hitting pretty hard on the center score, hopefully. So here comes Flame Wheel. That was their attacking move. They're very interesting because Flame Wheel has a chance of burning. Nice strategy. Here comes the uh, attacking move there, and Dual Wing Beat does like a lot of damage. It's a clean two hit KO. So we've got one more Pokemon left after the Center Scorch, which is that Al Creamy from before. I'm actually going to drop the Fruit Roll up on the floor, and we've only got like a 1v1 matchup here at the end of the battle. So I feel like I probably could have beaten the Al Creamy there with my Cafable. I still had one more turn of Dynamax, which I was going to go for a Max Knuckle, and then attack it with the uh, Play Rough. That was my uh, strategy there anyway. I also had the item as Quick Claw too. Thank you, Hatswood, for the battle. I ended up losing that one because I had uh, less health left. But uh, nevertheless, a pretty interesting game, and I wish the 20-minute timer wasn't a thing because we could have finished up the match. It would have been fun to see what happened. Okay, let's get on to battle number two. Uh, this one's against uh, Christy, and we got a Mashana lead. Pretty cool to see Mashana, and, you know, not a bad shiny either. Looks like it's uh, it's wearing blue pajamas. Now, my first Pokemon here is going to be Lopani this time, and it's going to fall... It forewarns a focus blast. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So we're going to go for a hype point. I think it's just funny because that was like the last move that I ever used against a Mishana. I just thought that was quite amusing. So uh, back to the battle here. I'm going to uh, set up my uh, uh, special attack with the Hyper Voice Throat Spray. Now Mishana is going to go for a Yawn. I'm thinking to myself, well, i got to swap out. But then I was like, no, you know what? I'm not going to swap out. 
I'm going to go for Dynamax, and I'm going to go for Thunder. What that'll do, right, is put the Electric Train on the field, and then when the uh, effects of Yawn come into uh, effect the uh, turn afterwards, it'll actually block the sleeping status. And then my Lopunny can stay in there and not be asleep. So that was my idea. So normally, I know, I'll be real. I just couldn't, at this stage, like, I can't be bothered swapping out. I don't want to swap out with my uh, plus one. I want to see what I can do. So Lopunny Dynamax there, and I can go for a Max Lightning to set that up. Then I can go for just an attacking move like, I don't know, anyone like Max Strike that should do. And Mashana gets actually hit pretty hard by that. So I'm quite happy with that. So now the Electric Train is on the field there. Uh, the Sleep Status is going to get blocked and Psy Shock isn't going to do too much. That would have hurt a little bit if I was in non-Dynamax. So the item Mashana's got a leftovers, which is, you know, fairly common item on uh, Mashana. And as you can see, it was blocked, the Sleeping Status. Always nice to do that. Uh, you can get around your opponent sometimes by doing that. I guess you got to use up your Dynamax, but maybe an you know, unexpected play your opponent might uh, not expect. So next Pokemon to come out after I've dealt with the Mashana is going to be Dustinos. I'm like, well, I don't know how well... I, I don't know how much damage I can do to this. Let's see. So go for Max Lightning again. Since I did have the Electric Train on the field, I couldn't use my stab. And man, it did a really good chunk of damage. And Dustnor is going to go for Curse. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So this is some sort of strategy based around putting a Curse on the opponent. And of course, the Dustnor feigning. Maybe they had, you know, no Pain Split or something like that. I had a pretty cool... Uh, Cursed Pain Splits that I've run a couple of times. So uh, that's the end of Dustin. Our next Pokemon is Dreadnought. Now, this is where things start to get uh, a little bit dicier. So obviously with this scene team, right, I wanted uh, my ability to activate. So I thought, well, that could require a bit of swapping too. Like I could probably swap into some other Pokemon and try and get it to activate. That was always on my mind, uh, especially trying to get this to activate too. But I didn't want to compromise the... Uh, you meet me actually trying to win the battle at the same time. So I didn't want to take like lots and lots and lots of unnecessary damage. So here we go. We've got a uh, Dynamax Dreadnought here. And I'm guessing this is probably going to be something to do with like a, uh, a Swift Swim set, right? So here comes the Max Knuckle. Thunder does a really, really good amount of damage. I'm very happy with that. I live the Max Knuckle. But if you remember earlier on, the Dust Knight actually set up a curse on me. And the curse from the Dustnor is going to take out my uh, Lopunny, which would have been great to land another Thunder on that. You know, would have put it in low range, but it is what it is. So the Dustnor came back to uh, to haunt me, if you could say. Now, the next bike I'm going to bring in is going to be the Sinsu. Now, hitting this with a Grass Knot would be wonderful, but of course, at the moment, I can't really do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap it in, swap it out for a little bit of a bait there, and we're going to go into Wiggly Tough. So I know Wiggly Tough can live a Max Knuckle, and I thought this would encourage Dreadnought to just go for another Max Knuckle, right? It's Considering I'm a normal type Pokemon uh, with uh, Cincino. Uh, now Wigglytuff kind of takes it all right, but not really that well. I know that it can, I know that it can uh, probably take this kind of nicely with Kefable. Since I'm not running an unaware Kefable, I am going to take this kind of like badly. So uh, I was thinking at least I've conserved my team throughout this, right? Except Lopunny, of course. And then he went for a water type move. I'm guessing it was at this stage like, okay, it's a physical move. I'd say it'd be liquidation. That's you know one of its best uh, physical moves. So the bad thing is it took out my physical attack in Clefable and it set up the uh, rain dance too. And if it's got Swift Swim, which I'm very, very sure that it does, I'm going to be in a, a lot of trouble, right? So first things first into uh, Wigglytuff. I've got to stall this rain out. That's my number one thing. So going for Protect, right? Because you've got to use Protection. Now, here comes the Liquidation. I blocked that. I thought about going for a double Protect here, but I was like, no. What I'm going to do, I'm going to conserve that Wheelie Tough, and now I'm going to go into Milotic, because I was 100% sure my opponent would go for a Liquidation again, right? So into Milotic. Here comes Liquidation. Like, watch this, ready? So it hits very hard. Like, look at the damage I did. Very, very impressive damage. And it's going to drop my defense too. And cute Charm activates. Okay, I was like, okay, this isn't all that bad, because at least I got it to activate. Now, the thing about this is, right, I, it, it, it's a, uh, it's still a chance that it can attack me, so I may get dropped the next turn, but i got to make most of this. I thought, if I can hit this with a Whirlpool, it'll do a fair bit in the rain, and Whirlpool misses on the uh, immobilization, which is very, very disappointing. I'm not saying it would have taken Dreadnought out, but it still would have done some decent damage there uh, when you take into effect of the rain being up and, you know, the after effects of Whirlpool. It's going to use Headbutt on my Milotic to finish me off there with a little bit of disrespect. I mean, any physical move probably would have taken me out there, you know, with a defensive drop and I had plus two in attack already. Finally, the rain is going to dry up here. This is going to give me the opportunity to go for a grass knot on this, which I haven't revealed yet. And that is going to be the end of the uh, Swiss Swim Sweeping Dreadnought. It's going to be quite dangerous in the rain, Dreadnought. That's why lots of people like to run the, uh, you know, the normal one over the G-Max. Now, the next Pokemon is going to be Mew. 
not amused. And I wasn't really sure what Mew would uh, actually be able to do. And I knew for a fact that I wouldn't be able to actually make use of my Q Charm ability on it. So it's going to Metro, mate. Like, oh, great. Now, anything's going to happen here, right? Now, Mew's going to go for a dive and it's going to hide under the water. See all the water up the other side of the field? There's lots of it, right? Lots of it. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to use Protect here. I might as well use that. I don't want to take unnecessary damage from the uh, metronoming Mew. But who knows what other moves the uh, the Mew has got. So now it's going to use Metronome again. I'm thinking right here, I hope it just uses Explosion. That'd be nice. And it's going to go for Noble Roar. Noble Roar is a move you don't really get to see too often. It's quite interesting. Um, it's a sound-based move, and it drops your defense. And uh, Sorry, your attack and special attack. I know what I said defense for. Um, so we're going for a Parasong here. What I want to do is, like, let's set the Parasong up. I'm going to try and at least cause a swap in this mirror, right? It doesn't seem to be too much of a threat at all. In fact, I, I don't really even care about it. It's just using Metronome, so it's fine. I can probably take this out with one of my other Pokemon, or like, you know, a good Hyper Beam to the face, right? So Mew's going to go for a Rock Throw. I'm like, that's pretty cool, Rock Throw, you know? So it's, it seems to only have Metronome. So we're going down to two turns each. I'm going to swap the Wheelie Tough out. And I'm going to go to since then. I thought, okay, this is fine. Let's go for Hyper Beam here. Let's get rid of this Mew. Or at least do a big chunk of damage. They actually went for Mimic there. So they tried to Mimic one of my moves. So it's got Metronome and Mimic. Hmm. Now the Mew's going to swap out before the Parasong uh, takes its full effect. And Cramoran is going to come in the greatest Gen 8 Pokemon of all time. Hmm. Now going for the Hyper Beam here. Hyper Beam misses. However, I outspeed and Hyper Beam connects. And that is going to be hitting very, very hard coming off. Uh, since, you know, uh, Stab, Choice, Specs, and Max Special Attack. And that is the end of Cramrant in one shot. Didn't even get to do anything. Now, the last Pokemon to come in here besides the Mew is going to be Tyrantrum. And I'm thinking, well, I'd like to hit this maybe with uh, a Fairy-type move. And it's going to go for a Super Power. And that's enough of my Cinceno. But the thing about it is it did drop its stats. I'm like, okay, this is... This is interesting because Superpower might be able to activate my ability, you never know. So I thought I'd swap a little bit of bait in here. I thought this might draw out the Mew, but I doubt it. It seems to only have like Metronome and Mimic. Now it's going to go for Body Slam. I'm like, oh no, they may paralyze me. This is bad. So I went for Force Bomb to try and get some damage and, you know, hopefully a paralyze, right? That was my idea. And I got the paralyzer. Like, oh, that's really, really good. So now I thought, well, let's set up the bulk ups here. This will be good. Now, now the Mew's... It's only same sad Metro and Mew, right? So I'm going to need a couple of uh, bulk ups to actually do some damage. So here comes a another body slam, and that one was actually a critical hit. I was like, damn, I, I might not be able to set up on this as easy as I thought. So go for another bulk up here, boosting my stats. I'm absolutely going to need to go for a rest now after that crit. Like, I can't risk it. So here comes another body slam from the... Uh, <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex like just stopping me at the moment and go for another bulk up. My poor little Stuffle. It's, it's getting the stuffing beating out of it. Now, one thing about Stuffle, right? I didn't notice this for the longest time. If you look at Stuffle from uh, fr from this angle, right? You can see the little ticket on its butt. It's pretty interesting. Like, it's a little toy. I don't know why I didn't notice it to now, but uh, yeah, it's just got a nice little effect there. So go for a rest of my Stuffle. That's going to get me all the way back up to full health. And now I can have a couple of goes at going for a sleep talk. Whether I roll a move, or bulk up is going to be a nothing, or I might just roll rest again. So here comes Super Power from the Tyrant Gym. Since its attack stat has already been dropped from using this move, it really doesn't do a lot of damage, and I've got my bulk ups up too, which is doing like lots. Q Charm activates. Like, okay, this is good. I might be able to set it up. The Tyrantrum had a mental herb, which cured the. Oh, it cured it. You wouldn't read about it, people. So Stuffle got stuffed up right there. So go for another uh, sleep talk here. So I think this is my first sleep talk, and I got rest. I'm like, okay, you know, at least we got that one out the way, right? Now, Tarantrum's continually going to go for Super Power here. I really don't want to get critted here. If I get critted, it's all over, you know what I mean? So another defensive drop there for Tarantrum. If I can land an attacking move against it, it's going to go, it's going to drop, like, in one shot, right? So go for sleep talk here again on the Tarantrum, hoping I can get the Force Bomb here, and it's going to get bulk ups. So I'm like, okay, I, mean, I would like an attacking move, but it's not the end of the world, right? That's another boost in attack. Now, the Tyrantrum on this turn is going to get paralyzed. I'm like, okay, that's good. No damage. Now, they're going to withdraw the Tyrantrum out, and the Mew's going to come in. It's like, okay, I wonder if Mew actually has a Psychic move or any, like, other moves in Mimic, right? I thought they might try and Mimic my bulk up or something like that, but that's going to be useless. So, go for the Force Palm right there. Does pretty good damage. Mew's got Confusion. I'm like, what is this set? So, it's got Mimic, Confused, and a Metron, right? So, I'm like, okay, it's still fine. I can go for Force Palm here. It's about a, you know, four-hit KO. It gets paralyzed by the Force Palm, right? Synchronized kicks in and paralyzed my Stuffle as well. This is bad. So now the Mew's going to go for Confusion. It's actually hitting pretty hard when you think about it. 
I get paralyzed on the turn I was going to go for rest, and Mew actually gets past the paralysis and takes me out. Where I, it's, you can't make this up, people. Like, so that's the end of my stuff. Well, that was really, really unlucky right there. It just had like the perfect moment. So my last Pokemon is Wigglytuff, and as you know, this thing only has Parasong, so I decided to saltily Parasong myself in the end there, and Wigglytuff ended up fainting, and so did the did the Mew. At least it fainted, right? Hope you enjoyed the cute charm ability of battle. It was a very difficult ability, but it was pretty fun at the same time. All right, people. Peace out.